Good morning. <laughs> oh, thank you. Very well done, Paul Bongiorno, leading the politeness charge. That's, that's fantastic. Well, I am joined by the Minister for Health and Ageing, Nicola Roxon. In February this year, I sat in this building with premiers and chief ministers from around the country, and we entered an agreement to fundamentally reform our health system, an agreement to deliver better services to patients, and an agreement which meant over the months to come we would work on the details and get the details right. Today, I'm in a position to announce that I have entered a health reform agreement with every state and territory in the nation. What this new agreement means, put simply, is more money, more beds, more services, more local control, greater accountability, less waste and less waiting times around the nation. Today we are able to publish that agreement so the nation can see the health reform that has been struck. It's got three major components. First, looking at proper funding. This agreement places an obligation on the Commonwealth to properly fund its share of hospital services. When we came to government, the federal government was funding nationally less than 40% of hospital services. And of course, there were periodic meetings where people would see health ministers storm in and out of rooms as the federal, then federal government and state and territory governments blued about what should go into health. In this agreement, we have agreed that we will properly fund hospitals. We will become an equal partner in the growth costs of hospitals, funding firstly 45% of growth and ultimately moving to 50% of growth. This is a commitment of $16.4 billion extra between the, the now and the end of this decade. It's a commitment of $175 billion extra by 2030 over the next decade and a half. What that means is that states and hospitals can reliably plan knowing that the federal government will be there and will be an equal partner in growth. What we've also agreed is that this funding will be transparent and accountable. Australians have rightly feared when they've heard about health agreements in the past that one level of government has been putting more money in uh, at the top of the bucket, but there's a hole in the bottom of the bucket as the other level of government takes funding away. And people have not known in a transparent and accountable way where extra money was going. This agreement changes all of that. As a result of this agreement, money will go into a transparent pool. Federal money and state money, there will be clear transparency and accountability about where that money goes to and how it is spent. People will be able to see the federal government's contribution and state government contributions. The days of the blank cheque are also gone. This money is being devoted to get major reforms to our hospital system. Indeed, this agreement delivers the most fundamental change to healthcare in this country since Medicare. It comes with clear transparency and accountability. It comes with more local control through local hospital networks and through Medicare locals. And those local hospital networks and Medicare locals will work with local clinicians who know what is happening on the ground and can help best direct services in their locality. But also at the centre of this agreement is less waste, because money will be dispersed in accordance with an efficient price. People have rightly feared People have uh, rightly feared uh, that uh, money in health has gone on administration. 
Money in health has gone to services, but services have been delivered with more or less efficiency around the country. And of course, there is evidence that in some hospitals, work is done much more efficiently than in other hospitals. So money will follow an efficient price, set by a national authority, set independently, and enabling us to see where the best and most efficient hospital practice is being pursued and then to spread that best practice. It won't just be government that can see all of these things. Australians themselves will have their own window on what is happening in the hospital sector. They will be able to see where the money goes. They'll also be able to see what is being delivered at their local hospital through the My Hospital website. Then there is less waiting for patients as a result of this agreement. And this is very important. For people to experience change on the ground, what they want to see is less time spent waiting in emergency departments and less time spent on elective surgery waiting lists. In February this year, we decided that the best way of ensuring that we had targets in the system that could be met and achieved and were meaningful for patients was to ask the experts. So we asked the Chief Medical Officer, together with an expert panel, to go and work and provide advice back to the Council of Australian Governments on what the appropriate targets should be. They have provided that advice and it has been accepted. What it means for emergency departments is that the appropriate target will be 90% of all patients seen within a four hour period. Now that is a change from a target that has been discussed earlier, but there's a substantial difference here. The earlier target of 95% applied to a selected group of patients. That 95% target applied to a group of patients when you had already removed uh, people who it was determined were clinically appropriate to not be in that group. We've got away, away from all of that complexity to make the system more transparent, more understandable and more meaningful. So the 90% target is for all patients who go to emergency departments. We understand that there are some patients for whom it is clinically appropriate that they are not admitted to a hospital bed or discharged within a four hour period. To give a common sense example of that, if someone, for example, had taken a drug overdose, it may be appropriate to keep them under observation in the emergency department for longer than a four hour period whilst that drug overdose wore off. Recognising that, the experts have said to us the appropriate target is 90% of all patients, recognising that there will always be around 10% of patients for whom it is clinically appropriate to be in emergency departments for a longer period of time. The target for elective surgery is now a 100% target. Uh, people would be aware that the earlier target under discussion was to say that 95% uh, of patients would get their surgery on time in the public hospital system and 5% would be referred to private hospital beds. The experts have advised us that that could have perverse and unforeseen outcomes. In particular, it would not enable public hospitals to make long-term reliable arrangements with private hospitals they want to have work with them. So the target has been changed from 95% to 100% of patients on elective surgery waiting lists getting their surgery on time. Around the country, this is a very different way for our hospitals to work. What it means is that the political blues people have got used to seeing every few years between federal governments and state governments are over. They're over because funding is certain into the future. We will be an equal partner in growth. For the system, it means more efficiency, transparency and accountability than ever before. And for patients, it means less waiting time for the services that they and their families need. 
I'll turn now to the Minister for Health for some comments and then we'll be happy to take questions. Oh, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here with the Prime Minister today to announce the finalisation of this health reform agreement. And I thought, uh, in addition to the comments that the Prime Minister has made, it might just be worth taking you briefly through, of course, the benefits that are already flowing to patients from the agreements that have been struck, uh, and that this agreement finalised today is uh, standing on the shoulders of services that our government is already delivering to the community. Uh, for example, as part of this agreement, 1,300 new subacute beds are being delivered across the country. A significant number of those are already up and running and providing services. Uh, for example, you could look in New South Wales um, at 10 new beds at Mount Druitt Hospital. You could look at 16 new subacute mental health beds at St George Hospital. We can look in Victoria and have examples in South Australia similarly. So it is already, uh, while some of the detail needed to be finalised, starting to deliver to patients in communities across the country. Similarly, of course, people would know that our Health and Hospitals Fund has now allocated $4.5 billion to 148 projects across the country. These infrastructure investments complement the ongoing funding that has now been negotiated by the Prime Minister with every Premier and State and Territory leader. Of course, it is also building on the investments that we committed to the um, states that we would deliver in the area of primary care. So you have seen, for example, in the last month, our new GP after hours service open. In the first month, that GP after hours service has taken 10,000 calls from across the country, showing that there is a great need to provide good advice and reliable advice to patients across the country, particularly at a time when their GP might be closed, that otherwise would mean they would be presenting at our emergency departments across the country. These are all complementary investments and reforms that are coming to fruition through some pretty dogged determination of our government and certainly some very dogged determination and negotiation mm. by the Prime Minister in delivering this final outcome that we can announce today. Of course, you also are aware Aware that other investments like our e-health investments, our telehealth consultations have come online from the 1st of July. This modernisation of the health system is a critical part of being able to deliver better services to patients across the country. And now with the finalisation of the emergency department targets, the elective surgery commitments, patients can see the plan that we will work on with the states and territories over the next few years to deliver constant improvements as we work our way to those targets over the coming years. And that's good news for patients, as well as good news, I think, for all governments, that we have a clear partnership outlined that is delivering to, to patients as we speak today and has enormous potential for the future.